by their own conclusions on um, on what that is. It was taken a couple minutes before she left my house. Okay, so then her lawyers later released a photo, and it shows scratches on the side of her face. It shows both of her eyes bruised, and we can show our viewers that photo now. And it's tough to see. Yeah. Can you explain this picture? Uh, I know what she looked like when she left my house. I know what her demeanor was like. What happened afterwards, I have no idea. So it's something you'd have to ask her. But I think the video speaks for itself on what she looked like when I last saw her. So you're not denying that you had, you were with her? No, I was with her, clearly. Yeah, I was, I mean, I'm right there in the video sleeping. That was me. Yeah. Um, we spoke and you told me the sex was consensual. Yes. You believe that? 100%. I've never sexually assaulted anyone, never will, never have. It's not who I am as a person. Um, it's been excruciating the last two and a half years being seen that way because um, that's, that's not my character. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I've never sexually assaulted anyone. Well, you know, Trevor, there are allegations from other women. Uh, I think there are three. Are, are they lying too? Uh, well, some of, the, some of those things are still playing out, but we will prevail in, in all of those. Mm -hmm. um, there's one outstanding lawsuit. Um, but we're going we're gonna to win that, just like we've won everything else. Well, uh, you were given, um, in a manner of speaking, a death sentence from baseball. You had a huge contract. Yep. And you had a hell of a future in front of you. And then it was gone. Yep. Uh, you went to Japan to play for a year. Yep. And now you're back. Is there a team in baseball that's interested in having Trevor Bauer pitch to them? Well, my agents are having those conversations. We've spoken with a lot of different teams. Um, Free agency is a weird process that plays out differently every single year. The timing is different every single year. Um, so uh, we'll see. Well, you, you told me that in the past you've ticked a lot of people off because you're pretty free with your words. Yep. Um, is that the reason why baseball did what it did? Look, or, I'm not or do you think Major League Baseball knew something else? No, I, I'm not sure exactly why they did what they did. I know that I've made mistakes. That's kind of what I am trying to focus on. Um, how do I get better from the experiences that I've had? Uh, I've made mistakes in my personal life. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really detail-oriented when it comes to baseball and my training, but I didn't apply the same level of scrutiny to my, my personal life. And uh, I made mistakes. I agreed to do things I shouldn't have done. It was reckless. Um, it hurt a lot of people along the way. Uh, it made things very difficult for Major League Baseball for the Dodgers, my teammates, friends, family, people close to me. Um, so I've done a lot of reflecting on that and made a lot of changes in my life to, to address that. Um, not having casual sexual relationships anymore, for, for example. I also, uh, you know, I made a lot of people in the media mad. I was very immature with how I handled things when people would write things about me that I didn't agree with. I should have just had a private <laughs> adult conversation with someone. Um, and I was bullied a lot as a kid and don't really want to get into that, but at the time, I viewed my responses on social media as like standing up for myself and mm. having a voice. And I think it was just an immature. You say you were bullied as a kid. That's a what lie, you said. Yeah. Uh, you're 32 now. I'm 32. Yes. Okay. So you think you're a new person? I've grown you, up a lot you, for you, sure. You have. You've yeah. matured on this. Yeah. My viewpoints now are drastically different than they were five years ago, ten years ago. Yeah. Things are more. Uh, different things are important to me. Do you think, in a way, that uh, that you've been a victim here, or are you? No, I don't. Making excuses. No, 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 I don't see it in those terms at all. I just try to reflect accurately on how I can be better, what caused me to do the things I do so I can address those in my life and handle them in a way that I'm more proud of in to, the future. Today, Trevor, if a team said, hey, come on our team, uh, sign with us, uh, play baseball with us, what would you do? Yeah, I'd love to play baseball. I mean, that's my goal is to play baseball here in the United States. Um, so one of the best pitchers in the world. I'd like to compete at the highest level. I'm also really passionate about helping people, being good for the game. I think I've done a lot of damage, unfortunately, in the first half of my career, and I'd love a second opportunity to do well, things better. So, so you're, you're not sit here to apologize for, for anything? What's, uh, I, I'm certainly uh, taking accountability for my role in this. I've put myself in a lot of uh, positions that have made things very hard for people, and I'm trying to be better. Mm. You made it hard for yourself. Uh, myself, but... Yes, myself, but a lot of the people around me, I think, are um, more important than the, you know, what, what, how hard it's been on me personally. Uh, good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, I know it's a tenuous time in your life, and you said whether or not another team goes for you on their team. Uh, you wanted to make sure that you took advantage of telling your side of the story.
Yeah, I want to be heard. I think it's important, and I want. I just want an opportunity to do things better. Um, I've made a lot of changes. I want to. I want to be better. Um, I'm constantly looking to improve, and I'm just looking for an opportunity to to be able to do that. So then we'll see if you get a second chance. I hope I do. Okay, Trevor Bauer. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good luck to you, and we'll see what Major League Baseball decides. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. All right, you got it. 25 past now. Well, the disgraced former Harvard president, Claudine Gay, claiming there was a coordinated campaign to oust her because of her race. And New York City Mayor Eric Adams bragging that the Big Apple is doing better than Los Angeles on crime and homelessness. Do the stats back that up? Our panel will discuss all of this next. There are those who say, I'm harsh. Do you want this in front of your house? You want your children to see this? The day you get your clear choice dental implant. We're like, no, bottom line, she absolutely stole from me. This is plagiarism. I don't know how she's in the position she's in right now because this has been known to people in her research circles for a long, long time. And Harvard turned a blind eye to it, especially during the investigation. It really hasn't been cleaned up. Uh, the efforts in L.A. have been futile. The homeless encampments have spread to every corner, every section of L.A. County and beyond. And places that you used to love, they no longer exist in that way. And it's almost gotten past the point of no return. Karen Bass, the mayor out there, she has her hands full. And I don't know if she has the spine and the tools to really take care of it. But it's also like saying, you know, we've got kids or they've got Alzheimer's. <laughs> Yay for us. I mean, they're, they're both pretty sick. That's pretty yeah. interesting. I mean, the mayor should have been at my subway stop last night at 6.30. Bad. I mean, West 4th Street was a mess. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was just vagrants everywhere. Yeah, I saw, I, I saw, like, wow, look by at the this. way, Mayor Adams, I hate to break it to you, but I saw a tent in Central Park yesterday with someone living in it, and it's 35 degrees out there. Look, this is what happens when you're a sanctuary city. Now he's complaining about all the migrants that are coming in because they have to, to house them. That's the right to shelter here in New York City. I got to give it to Adams. He's making his best efforts to fight back. He's going to court to try to get uh, the right to shelter laws we, tamped we are, down. We are you know, a long you got to help him out. We're a, little a long bit. way from where we were. Mm-hmm. Agreed? Uh, oh, I, oh, I agree, as okay. someone who has stuck it out in this city, sadly, still to this day. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Thank you, Kennedy. Thank Good you. to see you both. Thank <laughs> you. So the first direct response from the Biden team now against the Iraqi militia group behind more than 100 attacks on U.S. forces in the Middle East, how the targeted uh, attack could impact worsening tensions in the Middle East. General Jack Keane will answer that issue next. When our country used to flex its muscle with battleships like the USS Iowa, the world would listen. It's time we return to the America I remember. Hi, I'm William Devane. There are dangerous forces everywhere pulling our country apart, threatening our economy and our way of life. That's why I'm going to do two things, support our military and buy gold from Roslyn Capital. I've never felt safe relying on paper money to protect my assets. That's why I buy gold from Roslyn. With Roslyn, what you order is what you get. No gimmicks, no nonsense, no hassle. We're all safer with our ships patrolling the seas. And my assets are a whole lot safer with gold from Roslyn Capital. So ask yourself, are you safe? Call now to get your free gold, silver, and IRA kits. For a limited time, Roslyn is offering up to $15,000 in free gold to qualifying new customers. Call 800-630-8900. That's 800-630-8900. I'm here to tell you about saving money on your cellular service. All right, here we have cups of coffee from the same pot. These are more expensive. This one, just a buck. Which would you buy? It's simple, right? That's why thousands of people have switched to Pure Talk. They use the same... So just want to let you know we're waiting for police to brief. Should be about 17 minutes from now in Perry, Iowa. Looks like they're setting up for that press conference now. Uh, Paul Morrow's on the phone with us. And, Paul, it's hard to piece this together right now. We're hoping for the best. Uh, hasn't been a whole lot of information coming out of that school of 1,750 kids. Yeah, so right now the responding police, the first order of business, obviously, is going to be to assist any victims. Now, look, you know, we've seen this botched in the past at Ovalde, certain other situations. They're going to be cognizant of that. What you hope is that there's protocols in place. The police that are responding have considered a situation like this. There's no guarantee that this is a student. You know, when we see a high school-level shooting, we tend to think that, but we don't know that. So they don't know what they're dealing with. First, Assist the victims, any, victim, any victims that there are. Secondly, get everybody out of there. 
And then you can start worrying about who you got, where he is, and you want to isolate and contain. It's really two steps. The victims, and then you want to isolate and contain that perp. And, Paul, we heard that the FBI was on the scene, but they were letting local law enforcement take the lead. That makes sense, right? It does. Um, generally, it's going to be the local cops who are going to be first on the scene. They're walking around, uh, you know, responding to 911 calls. They're going to know the local terrain. The FBI, and some, especially in a rural area, FBI officers may cover a very large area. They may not be familiar with the, with the ground, you know, the conditions on the ground, the local area, the, the streets, fastest way to get there, et cetera. So generally, in a situation like this, they're going to be in an advisement role and also provide any material that are needed, any other hard assets or, or human assets if it comes to that. Okay. First day of school since the holiday, too. Uh, Paul, thanks. We're going to hope for the best, uh, the best at the top of the hour. Thank you. A U.S. official confirms to Fox News the military launched an airstrike in Baghdad this morning targeting an Iraqi militia leader believed to be responsible for 118 strikes on American forces in the region since mid-October. General Jack Keane joins me now. General, what do you know about this individual or this group that was targeting Americans, and why do we take the opportunity now? Was it just presented to us? Well, this is part of the Population Mobilization Front. Uh, that's a key organization that's an Iranian-backed militia group that has been leading much of the attacks against our bases in Iraq and Syria. And they were really focusing on uh, on the senior leader, who was one of the six people uh, in a vehicle. I think four were killed, X number are wounded. So it's likely we've been tracking this individual for some time, uh, making certain we aware of his whereabouts and used a drone, obviously, to surveil him and also to issue the strike. High time we started taking down some of these leaders, in my mind, and I think this should be an initial first step and continue to be aggressive in dealing with these things, because as we have been reporting for weeks now, they're just going to keep coming uh, until we force them to stop. And that's the reality of the situation we're facing. What do you say to people who worry? And I know that everyone should be concerned about a w wider war, but the tensions are there. Our, our forces were being attacked, and so the Biden administration took this action today. But you do have some saying, well, will this possibly lead to Iran trying to do even more? Well, I mean, over 100 attacks on our bases, that seems to me that, that the war has been expanded. Uh, shutting down the Suez Canal, which uh, only half of the shipping is getting through because of the Houthis conducting attacks and disrupting uh, commercial shipping, which required a multinational force, escort force, to do that. That seems like a pretty significant expansion of the war. I think we have to face the facts on the ground as what they really are and our, our, our timidity and reluctance to be aggressive in confronting them. Uh, I think is is leading to more aggression on their part. I mean, right. this is this is common sense. I, I think in dealing with it, and certainly Iran's a player here, Dana, and we should be taking them on and not be reluctant about. It. The fear is if we hit a capacity that Iran owns, then the people in the administration are concerned that that would lead to a direct confrontation with Iran and a war with them. History doesn't support that. Iran uses their proxies to avoid direct conflict with the United States. Why? Because they know full well they would lose their regime if they had direct conflict with the United States. Indeed. General Jack Keane, thank you for getting on with us today. We appreciate it. We now have set a date for the first hearing on impeachment of Homeland Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Plus, the eye-popping high-profile names who were palling around with child sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein. Congressman Andy Biggs of Arizona, Kellyanne Conway, Jason Rance, the Faulkner Focus, top of the hour. Date on the Iowa school shooting. Police say there has been the shooting at the high school in Perry, Iowa, the extent of the injuries are unclear. We're going to have a press conference at 11. We are reports of one person dead. So we don't know if that is a shooter. We are going to get this information at 11 a.m. Meantime, in Iowa, there are lots of activities happening, and Vivek Ramaswamy had an event scheduled just 10 miles from this high school bill. Yeah, and there's a lot of reporters in that state, too. You know, the caucus is 11 days away, and we just want to share with you right now what the candidates are doing. 
And uh, like if you live in Iowa, you know, if you're watching us right now, we'll get you the press conference coming up. But you're seeing ad spending for these politicians every time you get a commercial. Look at this. Uh, the darker the green, the more money they've spent. They're up to $100 million in Iowa. Uh, New Hampshire would be hit next, but right now that's where Iowa is. Who's spending the money? These are the TV ad reservations still out there now, 11 days away. And look how much time Nikki Haley has um, reserved and spent more than $5 million. Uh, with 11 days to go, and right now she's at 16% according to our Fox Business poll. Donald Trump is at 52% according to our latest poll. So I'm going to head over here, and I'll ask you some trivia. You ready? <clears throat> Has any candidate ever gotten 50% of the uh, caucus vote there in Iowa? I believe the answer is no. You're right about that. Very good. You know who told well, me that? Who? I read that in Josh Kroshar's Jewish Insider this morning. Very Thank good. You. Very okay. good. I got another one for you. What was the largest margin of victory in any, uh, in any Iowa caucus, Republican or Democrat? Democrat. No, no. Sorry. Well, who's the candidate? Oh. Uh, Jimmy Carter? It's a good guess. Okay. Bob Dole, 1988, oh, 12 and a half. Dole Kemp. But so when, we're at, so when we're out there in Iowa, this is going to be one of the big stories, whether or not can Trump get to 50 percent? Mm -hmm. And what's his margin of victory if indeed it turns out? If he does make history, suggest. that would be pretty remarkable. Yeah. But he's also making history here. The yeah. former president is asking the Supreme Court to overturn a decision in Colorado that booted him off the state's primary ballot. And now we wait for the high court to decide on its next step. David Spunt is live in Washington. David, do we have any indication if the court is ready to do this? Yeah, we really don't yet, and we're waiting to see what the court does, what the court says. Three of the justices that Donald Trump appointed are pondering this morning, do we even get involved? Now, he hopes they do. He hopes that they overturn this controversial ruling from the Colorado State Supreme Court. The justices, though, have quite a decision to make, Dana and Bill. Will they directly get involved in this case? It is a political hot potato, and the Supreme Court traditionally likes to stay away from politics, though one could argue they failed at that spectacularly over the past few years. Now, in addition to the Supreme Court, the former president has a court calendar and a campaign calendar that are really on a collision course. The Iowa caucuses, as Bill mentioned, that's coming up January 15th. Donald Trump's defamation trial involving E. Jean Carroll begins just one day later. Special counsel Jack Smith hopes to begin trial on March 4th here in Washington, D.C., where the former president is charged with trying to overturn the 2020 presidential election results. Now, that could be delayed because an appeals court is now involved. The classified documents case down in Florida is set to begin May 20th, although that could be delayed. Now, Donald Trump has many legal remedies, such as appeals and delays, which would really turn the art of the deal author, embracing the idea of the art of delay. But right now, we're waiting to see what the Supreme Court says, whether or not they will take this case. Many suspect they will, uh, because critics say it's just outrageous uh, that Colorado could take the front runner in the Republican Party and take him off the ballot, as we saw in Maine as well. There's Dana. actually the most bipartisan agreement we have in the country right now is that the Supreme Court should take this up and decide. They might want different decisions, but the agreement is about the Supreme Court getting to it. Thank you so much, David. You're welcome. Thanks. I want to make sure you know about this. Fox News is hosting town halls in Iowa ahead of the state's crucial caucus. Mm -hmm. Nikki Haley's event will be on Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Then on Tuesday night, we will hear from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Former President Trump is set for Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Brett Baer and Martha McCallum will moderate all three events. So they are headed to yes. Florida. Yes, looking forward to what the questions from the caucus goers have, too. Right? Like, what's on their minds? And what's on our mind at the moment is this scene in Perry, Iowa, a couple minutes away from the press conference there from police. Uh, this is what we understand. A shooting early Thursday at the city's high school happened around 745 local time. So that's right when school begins mm -hmm. after they come back from the holiday break. First day of the second semester. There is an AP report saying that Xander Shelley, age 15, was in a hallway waiting for her first day of school after the break when, sorry, when he heard gunshots and dashed into a classroom. Apparently that's uh, what his father, Kevin Shelley, is telling the Associated Press. The, the FBI is on the scene. We are told that they have let the local officials there take the lead, of course. So they are there in a supporting role. But you might hear from the FBI as well on this. And it is 40 miles from Des Moines. 
And as you say, people getting back to work, getting back to school, and not a yeah. good way to start the year, but hopefully that the police will have more information that is positive coming up in just yeah, a here's, few here's a quote, Dana. It was the most scared I've been in my entire life, end quote. Mm -hmm. And I am certain that is the case for There's men. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, big high school, about 1,700, 1,800 kids. I think that was under the whole school district. Uh, uh, the whole district. The whole district, not just yeah. that school. That's a small, pretty, uh, pretty but small well north in Des Moines, and we'll be out there next week, but we're hoping for the best right now when this press conference gets we, underway. We certainly so. are. Harris Faulkner will bring that to you. She is next with the Faulkner Focus. Here she is. We begin with breaking news. School shooting in Iowa. And we're told to prepare for police to give an update. They're very first just moments away. In fact, if you look at the left side of your screen, you can see the microphone bank there. You see officials gathering. As soon as they walk up to those mics, I'll go there right away and take that live. This is Perry High School in Perry, Iowa. And police have confirmed reports of an active shooter at that high school. Just so you know the location, it's about 25 miles northwest of the capital of Iowa, Des Moines. And today is the first day back at school following the school district's winter break. No confirmed casualties yet. You may hear otherwise. We want to wait and get that firmed up, perhaps momentarily, from the officials that you see in the distance there on your screen. As always with breaking news, the situation is in flux. So we want to try to get that, that confirmation of if anybody has been killed or hurt directly from the officers. I'm Harris Faulkner. You are in the Faulkner Focus. Now, as we await that, we have the opportunity to bring in our Fox News correspondent who's been on this story from the beginning as we first learned of it, Mike Tobin. Mike. We are reporting on the potential of another mass shooting in this one at a school, as you mentioned, about 30 minutes to the northwest of Des Moines, Iowa. All of it happening as we're just 11 days away from the Iowa caucuses. Uh, as you mentioned, there are some reports that one person has been killed, multiple injured. There are also, or there is also social media traffic to the effect that the gunman uh, is dead. None of that is confirmed. That's why we're waiting for the uh, first official word or first word from the officials as the Iowa Department of criminal investigations is taking over this story. We do already have some dramatic stories coming out of Perry High School. Uh, some of it coming from uh, Xander Shelley, uh, who uh, texted uh, uh, his or her father and uh, reported the shooting. Now, Xander said uh, at 7.45 a.m., uh, the shots first rang out inside of the Perry High School. Xander ran for cover in one of the classrooms and attempting to flee. Xander was grazed by bullets a couple of times. That, according to reports we've heard from from uh, the Associated Press. What we know from the scene, dozens of emergency vehicles are outside of the Perry High School. We know that it is a school district with some 1,785 students. We don't know exactly how many people attend uh, this particular uh, high school, uh, but we know it was the first day back in school. So quite possibly the shooter was waiting for the first day of school, the first day the school would be populated again. Again, that's not confirmed, but we have to wait till we get this uh, confirmation or get the official word from um, the officials who are investigating. We know that the uh, uh, FBI, now out of the Omaha and Des Moines offices, is part of the investigation. Iowa Department of Criminal Investigations has taken over. Uh, the Perry Police Department has confirmed, really uh, just through someone answering the phones, that there indeed has been a shooting at the high school. The Dallas County, Iowa uh, Police uh, Sheriff's Department has confirmed that they are investigating the potential of another mass shooting. So I'm sad to say we are back here again, uh, Harris. The situation of course, is very fluid. A uh, lot of traffic on social media. Uh, we're trying to get as much concrete information as we can to you. All right. And before we say we are back here again, we're not even sure where we are yet because they have not confirmed many details. And we are awaiting police to do just that uh, coming up at this first update and live new news conference. Mike Tobin, thank you very much. I want to bring in Paul Morrow, retired New York uh, police department inspector. He and I often will be together on these these occasions, unfortunately. Uh, you know, Paul, I, I, I was just saying to, to Mike Tobin, we really don't know much. A lot of times we'll know more than this because it'll be all over social media with people giving details. Right now, it is very much an emotional reaction without a lot of facts. Yeah, I'm not right, Harrison. What we tend to do is map over the current situation, things that we've had in the past, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, as they say in the military, generals fight the last war. So 
you want to make sure that you know you, you you're taking the facts as they come. The police responding here the, are the first responders. That is uniformed cops. They're going to have the ticket on this thing. FBI will be there in an advisory role. And it sounds like they've already got their legs under them pretty good. They're already thinking in terms of giving a press briefing. Um, there are apparently FBI assets at the scene, which that tends to take longer. So it sounds like it's at least right now pretty organized, and uh, you know they're trying to figure out what they have, and they may know a lot more, uh, you know, than we than we do, obviously. Sure. So I, I suspect we're going to get at the 11 o'clock a briefing that I think could be a little bit more substantive than we may have seen in some others. And you always caution that, that, that you as officers, and, and you've been a leader in law enforcement in the past, you as officers always know more than what you're telling the public. And part of that may just be um, because you can't share it, family members don't know, people who need to know haven't been told. The high school, the Perry High School, by the way, is part of the 1,785 student Perry Community School District. Uh, and again, you heard Mike Tobin saying that this was the first day back in school for students following the holiday break. Uh, the proximity in time to that, what does that say to you about, you know, when things like this happen? Again, being that general fighting the last war. So, you know, as Mike alluded to, since it's the first day back, it argues that whoever perpetrated this was had a plan, knew that the kids would be back in school today, et cetera. I would caution that we don't jump right to the idea that it's a student. Mm -hmm. Typically in high schools, we've seen in the past that, yes, it was a student, and I would argue that that's probably more likely than not here, but we don't know that, and there have been instances in the past where it wasn't a student, or maybe it's a former student. So, you know, we don't know that, but obviously whoever did this knew that the kids would be in school today. It's the first day back, and unfortunately, that person probably had some inside knowledge. Uh, some reports here that shots were first reported at 8.20 a.m. local time in Perry, Iowa. Witnesses there at the scene reported seeing students crying as they were reuniting with their parents near the entrance of Perry High School. Uh, they were dismissed and evacuated at nearby Perry Elementary School and Perry Middle School. Buildings were cleared by 8.35 a.m. So that's a really tight window. We don't have an idea of the ground of this, but but I gave you that number. The school district has about 1,785 students in it. That's at least three buildings they had to clear. The high school, the elementary school, middle school, as is being reported in what I'm reading. Yeah, so, you know, it sounds like um, there were protocols in place, and that is, uh, you know, good news. Uh, unfortunately, these days, Police at all levels have to consider something like this. We've seen operations in response that haven't gone perfectly, uh, like Uvalde, et cetera. All right. Paul, so we're going to pull away. Uh, you're going to stand by for when this is over. Let's watch the Dallas County Sheriff now. Uh, this morning at approximately 7.37 a.m., we had a Sears radio activation at the high school, which indicated an active shooter situation. Uh, an officer first arrived within seven minutes of that activation uh, and located multiple gunshot victims. Uh, we're still unclear of exactly how many are injured uh, or what the extent of those are, but we're working on that right now. There is no further danger to the public. The community is safe. Uh, we're just now working backwards trying to figure out everything that happened and make notifications. Um, there'll be another update later on today. Uh, we're, it's still very early. This happened at approximately 7.37 this morning. School didn't start yet, luckily. Uh, so there was very few students and faculty in the building, uh, which I think contributed to uh, a good outcome in that sense. But we'll have more information later on this afternoon. We will not be releasing any more information in the meantime. Uh, so please be patient with us so that we can talk with these victims and their families and try and figure out what happened. We won't be answering any questions today either for right now. Uh, we'll let you know later on this afternoon, uh, afternoon, what time we'll be meeting back with you again. And we hope to provide more detail then. So can we, just, just to be clear, you don't have a number of people who were injured in this? We're still working on that. Have you identified the shooter? Yes. 
what's their current status? Are they alive or? Oh, we'll get to that later on this afternoon. Can you confirm if the shooter was a student at the school? I can't confirm that right now. Can you confirm any deaths? Is there no, a reunification, not right now. reunification center for families and students right now? Great point. Uh, the reunification center has already been established, uh, and that most of those, I think, all the kids have been reunified already. Uh, so we're good in that in that area. Thank you. Were there any faculty members that were hurt? I uh, can't answer that question yet. Have you made any apprehensions or arrests? Can't answer that question yet either. We'll take no further questions at this yeah. time. We'll When's see the second afternoon. presser? Sorry, I just want to make sure. I will let you know. Okay. I, I we don't know. Iowa Department of Public Safety will push out a, a message as far as location and time of the next press conference. Okay. So if you go to the Iowa Department of Public Safety website, it'll be posted there probably shortly within, afternoon. Any shortly afternoon. Video available? I'm sorry. Any surveillance video available? There's nothing more that we're going to yeah, be able to you. answer right now. We'll thank you. Back. All right, so that was very brief, but we got some uh, good information there. I, I do want to bring Paul Morrow back, and let's go through the facts together with our audience. So uh, just really quickly, that was the Dallas County, Iowa Sheriff, Adam Infante, and uh, he said, no further danger to the public. And then we learned after he said they probably w were not going to take questions, not probably, he was not going to take questions, um, but to the credit of the reporters on the ground and to the sheriff, when, when the questions pop up and he, he realized, well, some of these maybe for the public should be answered, he even said to one of the reporters, that's a good question. So when he was asked, have you identified the shooter? He said, yes, we have identified the shooter. Does that go together that I'm wondering with no further danger to the public? We don't know because when it was asked, have you apprehended or arrested? That was unclear. Uh, 7.37 a.m. local time, in Iowa, a very serious radio activation happened. Paul Murrow, fill us in on what that that would have been. So obviously, you know, a lot of 911 calls must have gone out. Kids these days all have cell phones, et cetera. So they knew that they had a serious situation because you get multiple calls. You get one call, you know, it could always be a swatting incident, a hoax or something like that. My gut tells me that they were probably getting multiple calls from students that were in faculty that were there. Fortunately, according to the sheriff, there weren't that many, but uh, it was certainly enough for the local cops to say, okay, you know, we got a, what looks to be a genuine situation. And then again, hopefully they had protocols in place. It does look like this thing was interdicted pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, as you and I were supposing before the press conference, it did look like the situation had already stabilized. We were getting mm -hmm. that feeling and it does look like that that's been borne out because they, he said quite unequivocally, no current danger to the public. And right. that's an important fact for us. He also said very clearly that when they first arrived on the scene that there were multiple gunshot victims and he has not given a, given a number to that. Apparently at some later time today, there will be an opportunity to gather more information and an opening fully from what I understood uh, for questions. But that sheriff, to his credit, and you know that they are just buried right now with this investigation, did go ahead and take questions, and that was very helpful. Uh, one more important thing that he said upon being asked about a reunification center, he said to his knowledge, everybody has been reunited, and that is a blessing, those people who had gone to pick up their kids. Multiple gunshot victims, we don't know how many, no further danger to the public, and they have indeed identified the shooter. Paul Morrow, thank you for being with me. We are, during the Faulkner Focus and here on Fox News, going to continue to follow this, and we'll get you updated immediately as soon as we learn when they'll give the next update and what that will look like. All right, we'll move. It is getting too loud, apparently, for the White House to ignore. The House Speaker, 